Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this new session on our identity. We are covering, we are starting on BC 110, our identity, our identity in Christ. So what did we cover from past last three classes? What did we cover? We spoke about who we are and Christ is who we really are. So our, our identity is not on the social or the economical or the self-image that we have built for ourselves, but then our identity is in Christ. So when we say our identity in Christ, what do we mean? What do we mean by that? It's knowing our authority, knowing our dominion in Christ that makes us aware of who we are in Christ. The awareness, we need to embrace the truth that I am in Christ. Because I am in Christ, I have carrying an authority. I have a dominion over things around me. And we need to walk in that authority. How? We need to embrace this authority within ourselves. We need to embrace this truth. Let this truth become a reality. How can this truth become reality within us? By we meditating on the scripture. That's why this class is more to do with the scripture. We have continuously been reading the scripture time and again. Why? There are times we have been repeating the scriptures. Why? So that our mind a self-conscious mind can embrace the scripture, can embrace this truth and know that there is an authority and we have the power to have dominion over other things in natural because we have the authority in Christ and we need to embrace this authority in us. So our identity in Christ is a function and a relationship that we develop in Christ. It all depends on the relationship that we have, the fellowship that we have with Christ. So how do we develop this relationship and fellowship? It's only by meditating on the word. It's only on meditating on the scripture. So the more and more we meditate, the more and more we read the word and claim it over ourselves, this truth becomes our reality. This word has the power to change our mind and our heart. As we know, the battle is in the mind. The enemy can knock us down with many kind of words. But then when we know the truth, we can speak the truth. Just like how when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, how did Jesus handle the temptation? How did Jesus handle the temptations? By the word, by the scripture. He spoke the word. So what happens is when we meditate on the identity, on our identity in Christ scriptures, we have this word of God in us. So when the enemy knocks at the door, so you and I know to speak the word. And the enemy has to obey to the word of God. And he will flee from us when we release, when we speak the word. So our identity in Christ, again, is not based on our education, on a family background, on economic and uh, social culture or status, but our identity is in the relationship that we have in Christ. So that what, that's what we see in the word time and again, that the scripture says in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, it says, But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. What does it say? The people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. So when we identify ourselves in Christ, we will be growing stronger. And we will, you know, and we will carry great exploits in Christ. 
So in simple terms, to put it across, we can say, when we know our God intimately, we carry great exploits through Him. So Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, Thanks be to God, who has given us the victory in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God, who has given us the victory in Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. So in Christ, the believers has got the victory. Jesus got our victory on the cross, where he defeated the Satan and took the keys of the hates and death. So in Christ, we have this victory over sin, poverty. And every kind of sickness and disease. So when we know our victory, when we know our stand, when we know our authority, we can take a stand against this enemy. So this is where we fight our battle from. We fight our battle from the place of victory. And we are no more the victims. Jesus fought our battle and gave us the victory in him. With that, we know our identity is in Christ. So when we say that we have been identified in Christ, we are a new creation. Can we turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, which says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. So what happens when we become a new creation in Christ? What does the verse read? Can you read? So what happens here? If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Means what? He's a new species. So all things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. So what is it? there are two Greek words here. When we say new creation, there are two Greek words. One is kainos and the other is neos. Kainos means it is a new in quality. It's, some, it's referring to something new. What is it? New in quality, new in essence, new in nature, new in structure or new in character. That which was not there before. It is now in. So when we say news, what is news? News means new in time, something that is recent, something that is younger. So there are two things, something that is new in nature, something that is new in time. So there are two Greek words, what happens in new creation. So when we say this person has changed, he is a new creation. We are calling that person as a new man, something new, new in nature, new in time. So everything in him changes. So when we see the person is same, the outer shell of that person is same. But what changes? His character, his attitude changes. He's been trying to adapt the attitude of the spirit. We see the fruit of the Spirit has been stirred within him continuously. So this new creation, this new man is working towards the fruit of the Spirit. He may not be imperfect, but he is work in progress. You see, he is not, he, the old person, the old man is passed away. He, behold, he has become new the new creation we see the nature of christ we see the fruit of the spirit in this person so what are the fruit of the spirit can you list yeah so these are the qualities that we can see being developed in a new man that is love, joy, peace, patience, self-control, faithfulness, kindness, generosity, gentleness, long-suffering. All these things develops in that new 
person. How? Because the spirit of the Lord who is in him develops these character in him. So the old man, which began back in the time of Adam, has no more access in him because he has started this new man journey in Christ Jesus. So what happens? The nature of God, he's got the access to the nature of God, which can be seen or implemented in him. So we term this, we use the term called biology or the genetics. So what happens? This new man is a new species now. Something that is genetically distinct or distinct in nature has become uh, his character, the new character in him now. So the new create, the new creation, or the new uh, creature, the new species that we see as a man now is no more the carnal minded. He's no more leading his uh, life carnally, but he's spiritual. He's trying to please God in all the way. The spirit man who's in him has become active now, which gives him a new identity. So that's what we see in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that he's become new. He is a new creation and all things have passed away and all things have become new. So the new identity in a man, that is, what are the new identity we can see in a person or in our own self? We were dead, but now in Christ we are alive. Or we were far off from God, but now in Christ we have been brought near to God. The relationship has been restored with God where we have become the child of God and we have this authority to call God as a Abba Father. How? Through the Spirit of God. We have the spirit of adoption within us. This is what the scripture says, that you have been adopted to the kingdom of God as a child of God. So our relationship is restored. Now our relationship with God is different. We are close to Him. We have been made one with Him. Before we were strangers, but now in Christ we have become citizens. We have become the member of God's family. There were times we were in darkness, but now in Christ we are the light in the Lord. This is what in the book of Ephesians it says. So once we were sinners, but now in Christ we are saints. Our identity is in God. We don't, there is no more condemnation. We have been justified in Christ. No more we have, guilt has no power over us because we have been made righteous, we have been justified. We no more see ourselves as unrighteous sinners, but we see ourselves being made righteous in God's sight. And we are no longer what we used to be, but we have the spiritual relationship with God. This is what Apostle Paul instructs us to renew our mind and know our new identity and embrace that. Only when we renew our mind and we embrace to this new identity, we can lead our life victorious. So in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8, it says, For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So we need to know that we are the carrier of the light. We are the carrier of Christ in us. So the way we think, the way we talk is different. We, uh, we need to think differently. We need to think just like how God thinks. We need to see ourselves like how God sees us, instead of we condemning us. So speak to yourself with all that Christ would speak about you. You need to believe in that we have been wonderfully and fearfully made. We have victorious. We have been redeemed. We are blessed. We need to speak these promises over ourselves. We need to declare it over ourselves for these words to become 
reality in natural. So when we recognize and embrace our identity, we see our inheritance in this new life. This is what the apostles did, right? This is what even the disciples did. They never laid themselves back saying that I am not an educated man. I am a sinner. I betrayed Jesus. Peter never condemned himself that much. But then the very encounter with Jesus after his ascension restored him back, restored his identity, restored his call back. And here he stood with courage and boldness and he shared the gospel of Christ. He went on doing what God had called him to do. So you see the new identity in him. He was bold enough to address the people, address the issues. So we need to carry ourselves in that new identity. We need to lead ourselves with the new identity that God has given to us. Call ourselves what God has called us. That we are the child of God. We are the child of the Most High God. So in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, in the letter of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24, we see that the new creation is in the image of God. The new creation is in the image of God. So what we read in this verse, that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So here we see the scripture says that God made man in his own image. Where do we read that? At the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, when God created the nature, when God created everything, God created man on the which day? Sixth day. God created man. And what did God say? Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. God made man in his own image and likeness. So what happened? God created this man and what did God do? God breathed his life into him. So what happened? This man became the carrier of God's nature, God's life. So he put something of himself into man. What was that? The nature of God. So we carry God's likeness and image. But what happened later? Because of sin, this identity was lost. But then God had a plan. God had a plan through Jesus to redeem the mankind whom he created in his own image and likeness. So what happened? Through Jesus, he redeemed us. Through Jesus, he redeemed this man. He restored that image. He restored that likeness in us. So the nature of God is in us. Now you may think, how can this nature of God come into us? We all have seen babies, isn't it? So... But the baby is small. Can a baby talk? A one one month or two month baby? Can we expect that baby to talk? So what are the ways that the baby communicates to another person or communicates to the mother? Through cry. Can the mother recognize why the baby is crying? Is it for stomach pain or is it hungry? Is it asking for food? And the same baby maybe it's in you know in the uh, development stage of 4 months or 5 months when it can recognize the mother still the baby is not talking at 5 months but the baby is developed into recognition now if the baby sees the mother carrying another baby okay now the baby is seeing his mom carrying somebody else. Now, how will this baby react? Is he very happy laughing at the mom? 
How does he react? He starts crying. Why? Is he jealous that his mom is carrying another baby? So who taught this jealousy to this child? Have you thought? Who taught jealousy to this child? So there's something, the carnal mind, from birth it is there. The same way, when we are born again, we are born new in Christ. So this fruit of the Spirit, the nature of God, will also be born into us. Slowly it will start developing in us. It will draw us close to God. It will draw us to be more like Jesus. So there's the nature of God, the image of God, the likeness of God. When we are born again in Christ, all these character of God will also be born again. Slowly, it will take root and grow. The more and more we meditate on the word, the more and more we pray, the Spirit of the Lord, we are enabling the Spirit of the Lord to work in us so that this carnal nature, the flesh nature that is birthed in us, will have no more dominion over us. But the nature of God will take root and grow in us. You got it? No matter, physically we may be grown up. We may encounter the Lord in our age like 18 or above. So this person is well grown up. So the minute he receives Jesus as a Lord and Savior, the spirit man is born new in the Lord. So he will come across various temptation, various obstacles, but the way he handles it will be very different from where he handled it before. Sometimes he will handle it in the way it needs to be, like in the likeness of God or in the nature of God. But there are times he may fail. But what happens? The Spirit of the Lord who is in him will quicken it to him. Talk to his subconscious mind and say, what you did was not right, because you are no more the old person. The old man has passed away. Behold, you have become a new creation in Christ. You have this new image, new likeness in Christ. You are no more identified as the single person. For example, I am no more identified as Diana, but I am identified as a daughter of Christ. So if I do any mistake, it's like, hey, she's been a Christian, and look at her attitude. Look at the way she talks. Look at her action. It's not matching. So they don't compare me with me, but they compare me with Christ. You got it? So we are not compared with ourselves, but we have been compared with Christ. So when there is a change in our nature, a change in our behavior, even that has been recognized by people around us. So they don't see a carnal nature anymore with us, but they see a changed in our behavior, in our character, in the way we handle each one, each situation, the people around us with love, with the fruit of the Spirit. And here again, people rec recognize us with that nature. They say, there's a change in this person. There's something new in this person. There's something that this person is different. And I liked it. The people have been attracted to us because of this God's nature in us. So as a believer, what we need to do, as a child of God, what we need to do, we need to develop this nature of God in us. So that's the process that we are in. It's not a one-time process, as I said, it is a progress. As we meditate on the Word, we try to become more like Him. So we lead our life with the nature of God in us. Actually, we'll move on to the next scripture. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. As His divine power has given to us all things that pertain in life, pertain to life and godliness, 
through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which you have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We also see this divine power of God, which is enabling us to lead a godly life in the knowledge of Christ who called us. We also see in verse 4, which has been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises so that we can be the partaker of this divine nature. We also read in 1 John chapter 5, 1 John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Whoever believes that Jesus is Christ is born of God. So there's something happening here. Continuing the verse, And everyone who loves him, who begot, also loves him, who is begotten of him. So what, what do we notice here? Everyone who believes Jesus is the Lord and Savior has been born of God. There is a new birth that happens in our spirit. The new man has been birthed. So there is a new characteristic that has been developed in this new person inside him. What is that? That he has been made righteous. He has been made in the true nature of God. And he feels that he needs to walk in holiness. There is a need to walk in holiness because the God who created him, or this born again life, the God who created him is holy. So he gets this understanding that the God is holy and we need to lead our life in that holiness to please God. So this new creation that we become is in the image and in the nature of God that develops our spirit person to lead a life of righteousness and holiness. So that's what happened when and Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Time and again, I'm repeating the scripture so that we know our identity is in Christ. How? Because when we are in Christ, we have become a new creation, and all things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. So the sin nature that is in man has no more power over us, has no more has any authority or dominion over us. We need to believe it and embrace this new nature in God. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 and 18, what does it say? Following verse 18, it says, All things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So all things are new from God, is come into us. So all things that are new, all things are of God, has been birthed into us. So everything about this new creation, the new man, the new man in the spirit, has been birthed into us. So we no more lead our life carnally, but we lead our life spiritually. So how do we lead our life spiritually? we discussed it is not a one time pro one time effect it is a process so we need to grow into the full measure of this new creation of this new identity so we become new creation how in our spirit in our mind we apply it in our mind so what we receive in spirit grows into us so there can be two nature in us a carnal nature and a spiritual side. So what happens? A carnal mind and a spiritual mind. As we grow in the Lord, as we walk in this fellowship, as we walk in journey with the Lord, 
as we pray and meditate on these words, the more we read, more we meditate on the word, and more we lead our life in this new identity, we feed the spiritual person so that he can build and he can grow. But does that happen generally? What happens? You see, for example, a college going person, a college going student, encounter as an encounter with Christ, and he receives Christ as the Lord and Savior. He knows about Jesus. Now he's a born again believer. Now, if he makes a decision, to give in to the carnal lifestyle. Can you see the new creation, the new identity, lifestyle, nature in him? Can you see the spiritual side grow in him? That means there is an effort that this person needs to put in, that he chooses to meditate on the Word of God, he chooses to lead a life that pleasing God. He needs to feed the spiritual person within him to dominate the carnal mind in him. So always you see there's a battle, flesh, spirit. So whom we feed is what we see the action in us, in our life. So it's very important that we feed the Word of God within us so that the spirit person will be strengthened so that he can dominate the flesh side in us. So in, in natural, we need to feed ourselves with the Word of God. We need to train our mind with the Word of God. So what is in us is what you can see it come out of us. If you carry a bottle of mango juice and shake it, and when you open and when you press, what would come out of this bottle? Mango juice. Can I expect an orange juice to come? No. Just like that. So what is inside that vessel is what comes out. So what we feed inside us is what will show up out of us. The scripture says, yes, you are born again, but the tree is known by the fruit. The tree is known by the fruit. We all know we are born again, we are believers, we go to church regularly, we read the word, but if you don't apply it in your life, still we are carnal minded. Still we lead our life in flesh. We cannot see any fruit, the spiritual fruit in that person. So there is an effort that this person needs to take in. So how? This is what we read in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. Till we all come to the unity of the faith. Yes, you can turn. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13 till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him, who is the head of Christ. What do we see here? Growing is a process. Growing is a process. A spiritual growth is measured against our growth toward the full measure in natural. 
So the new creation, the spirit that is growing up into us, into the Christ likeness in all things. So it will affect our soul. That is what mind, will, emotion, and intellect, and our body, the action and the behavior in which we conduct ourselves. So that our character, we need to watch our character and behavior. Is it in Christ likeness? So growing up into Christ likeness requires our effort. How? As we grow in the knowledge, the Son of God, as we read in the scripture, Ephesians 4.13, that we need to grow in word and in spirit for us to grow in the likeness and the nature of God. The word is what gives us the revelation of who we are in Christ. The word has the power to change us inside out. Only the word. So only when we have this word in our heart, now the word has no power if you have it in the Bible, you carry the Bible with you, but then this word should penetrate into our heart because the word has the power to change us, change us inside out. The word has the power to bring the Christ likeness, to, bring the to give birth to the nature of God in us. So how? It is a continuous process. As we increase in the knowledge of Christ, we see ourselves more in Christ's likeness. So we, uh, as it said in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, we see that, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. So what we see here, we all as we grow in the Lord, we also grow in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. What does grace in the New Testament represents? What does grace mean to us? Unmerited favor. Yes, it is God's favor. It's God's character and God's empowerment. So all that is unlimited to us, unlimited, we have the <coughs> we have the access for God's unlimited grace in all aspects of our life through Jesus. As we read in John chapter 1, verse 16, we see that. Of his fullness we have all received and grace for grace. So this grace is made is been made available to us in Christ so that we can uh, lead our life and grow in the Christ likeness and in his image. So this life, the life in Christ, we need to embrace our identity is in Christ. So that's why God has placed us in Christ Jesus so that we would be the people, we would be the children in the image of God, in the image of the Son of God. So we are the people who would be in Christ's likeness. We will be, we will be people who pleases God, who worships Him. The purpose of God will be fulfilled in and through us when we have this transformed mind, when we have this renewed mind in us, which praises God for who He is in our life. So when we have this identity, the new identity in Christ, our heart will only raise praise and glory to God. We will become a new vessel. That's what the scripture says. Our new identity in Christ is what transforms us. We will be no more an ordinary person, but we all will be a transformed person. We will be a vessel of honor that pleases God. We will be the carrier of His presence. We will be the carrier of his likeness, the nature of God is has been implanted in us. 
which has the power to change our mind, change our heart, and lead our life victorious in Christ. So with that, we end this session. Is there anyone in the class who would like to share your insight of being one with Christ? or identifying yourself in Christ that has helped you in the walk of your life. It can be anyone from our on campus or anyone from our online. If you would like to share, you can unmute. I mean, you can raise your hands by just pressing on that uh, uh, icon, raise hand, and you can share. Or anyone from the campus, you can also share with us. Anyone from our campus would like to share how this identity in Christ has helped you journey with God or grow more in Him or being drawn close to Him? Yes, Nina, please go ahead. Amen. 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 That's wonderful to hear. We have Nina in class. So she has this experience with God. Like initially, she had this fear, a lot of fear. But then, after being born again, she identifies herself with Christ, through which a relationship with God has been restored. And she could call. She could call God as Abba Father, where the relationship of a father has been restored and she's feeling peace and happy about it. Praise God. Anyone else? Okay, yes, time is up. We can end the session with a word of prayer. Okay, we also have Krisha share something here on. On chat, Krisha Gotami, we see that she has written, I am able to be more patient with people around. Yes, that's again the likeness of God, God's nature. You see, God's nature in us when we have been born again, we identify ourselves and God. And because of that, we see the nature of God been manifested in us. That's wonderful. Thank you, Krisha, for sharing that. Okay, with that, we will go into a time of prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this new identity, new relationship that you have with us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, as each of us embrace this truth of word, where we embrace this identity in Christ. We pray that, Lord, the nature of God will be activated in us, that we see the fruit of the Spirit been activated in us so that each of us may lead our life and grow more in the nature of God, Lord. Thank you, Father, for drawing us close to Jesus, that we may be made perfect in Jesus and in Jesus alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, class, for joining in today's session. See you all in the next class. Thank you so much. God bless.